This is how alcohol is controlling your mind. I want you to imagine you went to the chip aisle in the grocery store because you love making these homemade nachos and you've got to get some chips for the nachos. So you go to the grocery store and you scan the grocery aisle at all these different options of chips for you to choose from. And after a little bit of debating, you decide to go to your favorite chips, the Sweet Chili Heat Doritos. And so you grab the Sweet Chili Doritos from the aisle and you walk over to the cash register, you pay for your Sweet Chili Heat Doritos and you go home. You're starving now, so you get to cooking and chefing up and making your, your nice little nachos with the Sweet Chili Heat. Um, Doritos, you sit down to eat, and of course, you're an iPad kid. So what do you do? You take out your iPad and you start watching YouTube videos in order to entertain you as you're eating your nachos. And halfway through eating your nachos as you're stuffing your face with cheese and, 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 and beef and all that good stuff, you see a video that says, we must cancel Doritos. So you click on the video because it piques your interest and the headline just looks insane. So, and then you find yourself going down a rabbit hole and you realize that the way Doritos creates their chips somehow causes world hunger or aids in world hunger and that they are aiding in creating an unsustainable earth the way they create their chips. So you decide that you're going to be a good Samaritan and you don't want to support a company who doesn't support getting rid of world hunger and who's aiding in world hunger. So you immediately decide this is the last time you're ever going to eat Dorito chip. And you take your phone out and you take a video of you crushing up the chips, you're stomping on them, you know what I mean? Telling everyone, hey, we're never gonna eat Doritos again. Doritos is canceled. Throw them all in the trash and you take a video of you crumpling up the Doritos and throwing the whole bag and all the Doritos in the trash. So the next day while you're out, you're like, man, I'm really craving some of those nachos I didn't get to eat yesterday, but I know I can't make them with Doritos. How about I stop at Taco Bell and get some nachos? Those are pre-made already and I know I won't be supporting Doritos, because Taco Bell is a totally different company. It's a fast food company. Doritos is a food brand. Come on. So you go to Taco Bell to get their famous nachos. You order the nachos and you're eating them up. You're enjoying the nachos. The nachos are amazing. And you sit there satiated, happy that you finally got to eat your nachos, but you didn't support world hunger. And that's where you're wrong. Because when we take a look in the classroom here and we look at this chart that tells us what companies own what brands, we actually see that the Dorito chips that we decided to eat, right, are owned by PepsiCo. But if we look at the string of things also attached to PepsiCo, we see Yum here, right? And underneath Yum, we see Pizza Hut, KFC, and Taco Bell. So what does that mean? What that actually means is that even though we said we weren't gonna support Doritos because Doritos aids in world hunger, right? The company we chose to support, Taco Bell, is actually owned by the same company that owns Doritos, PepsiCo. So we thought we were taking the money out of Doritos pocket and putting it in Taco Bell's pocket, but we're actually putting our money in the same company's pocket, no matter which company we choose to support. And so the idea that we would cancel Doritos to support Taco Bell is laughable to PepsiCo because PepsiCo sits back and says, you had no idea that I own Taco Bell too. And even if you were gonna choose another chip brand like Lay's or Tostitos or Sun Chips or even Cheetos as the brand you wanna support, it's still all gonna come back in my pocket, even if you decided you wanted to eat chicken and not nachos, you're still supporting the same brand you chose to cancel. And so how does this relate to alcohol and how alcohol is controlling your mind? Well, this example that I gave you is what's called the illusion of choice, right? Because when you think you have a choice, right? You have the illusion that you have many different options. You think you have free will. And when you think you have free will, that is the easiest way to control your mind because you're not looking for answers. You're not looking for more. You think the choices are all in front of you and whatever you choose is from your own volition and your own mind and your own ideas. So how does this relate to alcohol? Let me ask you a question. 
when you go out with your friends, right, what's the most likely thing for you guys to do together when you're pre-gaming to go out with your friends? You're, you're going to drink alcohol, right? Why? Because it's socially acceptable that everyone gets drunk on a night out. Okay, cool. Maybe you don't want to drink then. As soon as you walk into the bar, right? What's the first thing you do when you sit down at a bar? The bartender comes over to you or the server comes over to you and what do they ask you? What would you like to drink? They don't even ask you, do you want to drink? They ask you, what would you like to drink? Because the assumption is you wouldn't step foot inside a bar unless you had plans of consuming alcohol. And both you and the server understand that. So by the time you even step into the bar, you already have a subconscious pressure on you to drink alcohol, right? It's something amongst our society, right? But we think that when we sit down, we are choosing to take a drink, but we actually have societal pressure all around us that is forcing us to drink even if we don't understand the concept of why we should be drunk just to go out right? I want to ask you a question. If I were to come to you right now, just like a guy on the street, and I told you, yo, I got some funky juice for you. Like you drink this juice, you're going to go all loopy and hysterical. You're not really going to know what's going on. You'll barely be able to walk. You're just going to slur your words. And the next day when you wake up, you're going to be fried. You're, you're, you're barely going to remember anything that happened last night. It's this funky new juice I got, right? You want to try it? You probably say, hell no, man, I'm not trying your funky juice. And, and that's a natural response. But when you think about it, that's exactly what alcohol is doing to you. You've just normalized it to the point where you think that's a part of what society should be doing. And so why do I bring this up? Because again, we have an aspect of the illusion of choice, right? Nobody's telling you you have to drink, but we're presenting alcohol to you in a way where you feel like you are so pressured to drink that there is no other option than to drink. But because nobody's forcing alcohol down your throat and you have to buy the drinks and purchase the alcohol, you think you're making a conscious choice. And so now you're getting drunk with your friends and alone or whenever you go out on a night, right? You get blackout drunk, you get super drunk, you get tipsy, whatever it is, you're drinking right? You're, particip you're participating. And when you're drunk, right? What does that do? That lowers your inhibitions, right? You're vibrating at a lower frequency, a lot of people would say. And your shadow comes out. You probably do a lot of things and say a lot of things that you regret, right? You also see a lot of things, right? You're more likely to do something stupid when you're drunk than when you're sober. I want you to imagine a psychiatric patient, right? What's the first thing they do to a psychiatric patient who's having manic episodes, right? They put them in the hospital and what do they do? They drug them. They drug them to make them docile, right? Why are they trying to make them docile? Because they don't want them going all over the place, yelling and screaming at everyone and doing all this stuff and, and making everyone's life hard. They want them to live and exist in a state in which it doesn't bother anyone, right? They So they give them these drugs and what these drugs do to their brain is it essentially fries their brain so that they're just existing. They can't really think. They don't really have any thoughts going on. They're just blank. They're a blank sheet, a blank slate, just existing only in physicality, but not mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. And why do I give that example? Because it's the same thing with drugs and alcohol. Is there ever going to be a point where you don't hang out with your friends? Of course you're going to go out with your friends. And if your friends normalize drinking alcohol, then it's going to be that much harder for you to not normalize drinking alcohol because of groupthink. Well, what is groupthink, you might ask? Groupthink? Groupthink is a phenomenon that occurs when a group of individuals reaches a consensus without critical thinking, reasoning, or evaluation of the consequences or alternatives. Groupthink is based on a common desire to not upset the balance of the group. Well, groupthink happens every time you feel subconsciously pressured by the fact that your friends all drink to go out and drink also. And it just snowballs, right? Because when you drink, then the next person feels pressured to drink and the rest of the group feels pressured to drink. And then the new person coming into the group also feels pressured by the rest of the group to drink. And it's a vicious cycle. And all of this is keeping you docile. Have you ever noticed that every time you drink, you feel like you have to reset yourself in the sense that you wake up 
your brain is scrambled, your, 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 your mind is scrambled, your feelings are scrambled, you can't quite remember what happened last night, and you almost have to like power yourself back on and recenter yourself and refocus. Why is that? Because alcohol is scrambling you, it's scrambling your energy, scrambling your emotions, scrambling your thoughts and your feelings. And what happens when your entire being and emotions and feelings and spirituality is scrambled? You're not able to focus in one direction. You're not able to see things for what they are. You're easily controlled because much like the psychiatric patient that's having a manic episode, you're being medicated so that people can control your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Because how on earth would you ever have time to think about the fact that the company you just canceled is actually the same company that owns the company you're supporting in place of the company you canceled if you're spending all your time out drinking with your friends? How can you ever stop to think about the top 1% of people who are even more powerful than the government and control things that you aren't even aware of if you spend all your time out drinking and smoking with your friends. The moment you put down the vices, the alcohol, the drugs, the weed, the smoking, all of that stuff, is the moment you start realizing what's actually going on in the world around you. There is a lot of illusion of choice out there that makes you feel like you have free will when the top 1% is sitting there laughing at you because they have you exactly where they want you, distracted, from the truth.